Good morning. What a beautiful morning. What a great day to come together to praise God. You know, we're continuing our series this morning on Kingdom Citizens. And uh, I'm sure many of you have heard the distinction, the already, but the not yet. And, um, you know, like in, in a time like 2020, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen the memes on Facebook at, about what 2020 is like. It's, it's probably generous to say it's, it's been a challenging year. And so when we go through challenges in life, we say, what, when are we going to get the not yet? That we're looking forward to something happening. And as we study the kingdom of God, what are we looking forward to? That's a kind of a question that helps us because when we realize what we're looking forward to, it gives us motivation to live for God today and to worship him today. And that's what we want to do this morning. So I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 7 of what we're looking forward to. And this is it. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever and ever. And that's what we're looking forward to. We get to worship God, and it'll never be boring. It'll never get old. It's going to be the most glorious experience in all of history. People from every tribe, nation, and tongue. Men and women who've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, made sons and daughters, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's who we are this morning We've been made sons and daughters. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And now we get to lift our hearts and our voices to the living God, the one that we will worship forever. So let's do that this morning. Let's worship God together. Good morning, everyone. Would you stand and sing with us?
sing the blood of Jesus is enough. Morning, everyone. Kind of feels like you know when it's really cold out and your car takes a little extra to start. It's kind of how I feel this morning. But I'm excited to sing, and we're going to sing a new song that actually is going to be um, a song we're going to sing throughout this entire series, "The Kingdom of God." And if you uh, saw the emails this week or saw the Spotify playlist, maybe you've heard it so far. But it's called "Ancient of Days," and I'm just going to read the first verse to you. It says, um, "Though the nations rage, kingdoms rise and fall." There is still one king reigning over all. So I will not fear, for this truth remains, that my God is the Ancient of Days. And so this song is all about giving praise to a never-changing, always faithful God who is in control of the kingdom that we are a part of and that we're worshiping. So let's sing and learn this together. Yeah. 
Father, we ask that that would be true of us this morning, that as we listen to your word preached to us, that as we sing more later, that as we gather together in fellowship, we would be a people who cry, it's, it's not us, Lord, but it's your power working in us. If there's anything good we do, it's for your glory, and it is not of us, but it's you working in us. We're grateful that you've given us, that you didn't save us and just leave us, but you have gifted us with your Holy Spirit to work within us. The same power that raised Christ from the dead, we have access to to do your will on this earth, and we are grateful for that, Lord. It works in us and makes us better, and it helps us reach the day where we will see you face to face, and our joy will be complete. So we sing together with joy this morning, Lord, yet not I, but through Christ in us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it is great to be together. Welcome Sunday morning to worship at Redeeming Grace Church. For those who are online, we welcome you as well. Um, if you've been joining us online or, or, or for the past few weeks as a guest, I hope you've had a chance to meet some of us. Uh, hopefully you've gotten to know different ones of us. And if you haven't, you can always stop by the Welcome Center at the table. Or I'm Kenneth Moresco. I'm the Community Life Pastor. I'd be happy to get together with you if you'd like to talk about community here at Redeeming Grace Church. You can learn more about what is happening at Redeeming Grace by going to our social media platforms online. You go to our website, Instagram, Facebook. They're all helpful sources of information. And you can also learn about what's happening here at Redeeming Grace Church by signing up for our weekly newsletter, the RJC Connect. And we also send out regular emails from the church if you'd like to receive those as well. But if you're looking to learn, learn more about Redeeming Grace Church and you are here this morning, it's a great morning to be here because today we do have a guest lunch at 11.45 uh, this morning after the crew gets the, the stage broken down. We're going to meet in that auditorium and there will be social distancing so it'll be safe. And you're welcome to come hear about Redeeming Grace Church and how you can be involved in our community and what's going on here and you'll get to meet some of our members. Uh, you can learn also about, we'll be talking about our new members class, which is called Membership Explored. And that's coming up next Saturday, September 26th, and next Tuesday, the week after this Tuesday, September 29th. And you can register online or simply call the church office. That's next Saturday, September 26th, or Tuesday, is September 29th, if you would like to learn more about how you can be a committed member of Redeeming Grace Church. And that's kind of relevant today because today we're welcoming new members. And, um, uh, but as we do that, before we do that, I want to just thank you all for your faithful giving over the last whatever, how, I don't even know how many months we've been in this season that we're in now. Someone could probably do it quickly in your head, but you've been faithful. You've been giving faithfully to our church, and thank you. Uh, I think Dave Falk is going to give us a budget report from last year, next week, and I'm looking forward to that. It's good because of your faithfulness. And uh, if you're here and you'd like to give, you can give online or uh, you, know, you can check the webpage to learn more details about that. We're gonna welcome new members and I'm gonna move down to the ground here. I'm gonna try to do it gracefully. Let's see if I can get down here. That was pretty good. Um, this morning we have the privilege of welcoming Six new members, uh, three are present, and three are unable to be with us this morning. And uh, these new members are joining us in an unusual season, as you know. Some are still watching online because of health concerns. But regardless of the season, these men and women have learned about what we do together and what we are together as a church community. And they're making a commitment this morning. They've signed our membership commitment, which is an expression of our mutual commitments to one another. And I want to just remind you of what we all have agreed to this morning by reading the beginning of the new member's commitment, or the member's commitment here. It says, having been brought by God's grace to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and having been led by the Holy Spirit to join together as members of Redeeming Grace Church, and affirming the Redeeming Grace Church statement of faith and bylaws, we do joyfully and willingly make the following commitments. And I'm just going to read the first two. By the grace of God, we will live our lives together under the supreme authority of the Bible. We will order our lives together around the central theme of Scripture, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And number two, we will live together in love, pursuing relationships with one another, praying for one another, rejoicing in one another's happiness, and bearing one another's burdens. You know, when new members join Redeeming Grace Church, 
They're agreeing to live their lives under the authority of Scripture. And they agree to live in genuine relationships with us, praying for us, rejoicing with us, and bearing mutual burdens. But brothers and sisters, let's remember this morning, as they're becoming members here, it is not only they that are committing to us, but each of us have committed the same things to one another, and we are committing to them as well these same things. I want to remind you of our mutual commitments to one another. I don't have time to read the other nine commitments they've agreed to, but you might want to take time this week to just go to our website under our new here, there's our beliefs, and you can find our membership commitment there. And read through it again to remind you of our mutual commitments to one another. It's very edifying, encouraging, and hopefully will encourage you to just continue to love and serve God together uh, in the days ahead. What an enormous privilege it is for each of us to be part of God's people in a local church, walking together in the new covenant of Jesus Christ. So as we, as we welcome these new, these new brothers and sisters, you can come up here now, um, uh, let's remember God's goodness to us and to them. I'm going to read you the names of the people who are the newest members, and then we're going to hear from Grace and Ike. You guys can come up here, just stand over here if you wouldn't mind. And um, I'm going to read their names to you here as, the, as Grace and um, Ike and Anya join me here. It's Ike, and, Ike Suter and Anya Suter, Grace Vanderham, Daniel Marsluf, Rachel Shirey, and Joshua Malahan. And you can, actually, you can find their pictures on the, the, where you have the lyrics on the, your phones. If you have your phones there, you can see all their pictures so you can see Daniel, Joshua, and Rachel. And I just want to say, we miss you, Daniel, Joshua, and Rachel. Thank you for joining us online. And thank you all of everyone who's joining us online. We miss you too. And we look forward to when we can all be together outside of this time. Uh, so at this time, we're going to hear from Grace and then Ike. So uh, Grace, would you just yeah. share with us? Okay, hi, church family. I'm Grace Vanderham, and yeah, yes. apologies. Um, so I found the church because I came back from Liberty University just in May 2020. I graduated, and so my family goes to a different church in D.C., and it's too far away because I live out in Centerville, so I decided to look for a new church, and I found this church online, and I was immediately encouraged because of all the ministry opportunities that you guys have. And at first I was like, okay, that's really cool, but you have to back it up. So some churches, they can have a really good face, but they don't have anything behind it. So I wanted to come and see how it was. So I came to a new members class with Kenneth right here and just heard about everything and was really excited. And so I told my sister and I was like, this church is amazing. And I called her up. She lives in Missouri. And she was like, okay, calm down, go to a couple services and then see how it is. So I went to a couple of the services and I was still really encouraged and I prayed a lot. And so I decided to join the church. So that's why I'm joining the, joining the church here. But um, how I've seen God work in the church has been absolutely incredible. It's because you back up the ministries that you proclaim and the ones that you've talked about, whether it be VBS or small groups or the military or homeschooling uh, ministry. And just an encouragement for all of you guys, I'm a very big picture kind of person, so I kind of look at how God is using people in a big way, but I've been learning through this church especially that God also works in the small details to make sure that the big picture things happen. So all of you, with all of the things that you do, whether it be a kind word or helping your neighbor, it's an incredible testament to God and giving glory to him. And so I'm just really encouraged by the individual people here. And I'm really excited to join the church. Thank you. Hey, I'm Isaac. Um... So I grew up in Redeeming Grace. Um, I went away to college, um, and when we got married and moved back to the area, we looked at a number of local churches. However, we began attending Redeeming Grace um, because we've really seen God's work here. Uh, the community has been extremely uh, welcoming and friendly, even in these unusual times where, uh, let's be honest, it's a little easier to be distant um, and not really reach out to people. Um, the eldership team here longs to hear from members. They're humble, um, and they want to hear from members where they can better serve and love. Um, and we've also seen God's work um, growing and building an incredible careers ministry, which is something that we were really looking for. 
We're very excited to join RGC and continue to see God's work here and in us. Thank you, Ike. Welcome to you both. We're just so grateful that you're joining us. Thank you, Grace, for sharing your hearts. Um, and thank you to Daniel, Joshua, and Rachel also for joining us this morning. Now, normally we would pray for these newest family members and you'd come up and greet them. Uh, I want, we're not going to do that this morning because we don't have the break and all that stuff. But whatever ways God puts on your heart to reach out to them, invite them, whatever ways, greet them on Sunday morning, send an email, please do that. Um, I'm going to pray for them now. And uh, new members, we're looking forward to honoring Christ together with you and just living out these membership commitments that we've made to one another. Thank you for joining us. We're excited about it and uh, just really grateful for you being here this morning. So let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace toward us. We thank you that you have redeemed us from our sin and brokenness, Lord. You have made a way for us to be reconciled to you, Lord. But you didn't leave us alone as orphans. You made us your children, sons and daughters. But you didn't leave us only children, Lord. You made us with a family, brothers and sisters, through whom we can gather together in local congregations and serve you. Lord, we're so grateful that this is the way you've chosen to build your kingdom through the proclamation of the gospel. And we welcome and receive these new members for your glory so that your name will be lifted up here, not only in Fairfax County, but even to the uttermost parts of the earth. We pray, Lord God, that through their joining here, Lord, we would be strengthened and your name would be lifted up for the glory of Jesus Christ. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, new members. Thank you, Ike, Anya, and Grace. We love you. We're grateful for you. Let's prepare our hearts to receive God's word as we hear the second message in our Kingdom Citizen series. Let's open our hearts to God's word. All right, I got all my stuff ready, I think. Good morning. I was sitting back there, I love New Member Sunday, and I was just sitting back there thinking, in July we gave out fans, now everybody's out of the shade. We need to give out like RGC visors or something, right? We gotta go with a new item for each season. But it's good to be together, and welcome to those who are watching online, as well as Kenneth, uh, mentioned. We're in the second in a six-part series. My name is Mark Mullery. If you're here for the first time or watching for the first time, welcome. I'm the teaching pastor here, and it's my privilege to, to preach a message called The Kingdom is Today. What we're doing in this series is we're trying to do uh, uh, two parts to it. First is we want to orient you to what the kingdom of God is all about. So last week we heard what it is today. It's how it's here today, and next week it'll be how it's future, it's coming. That kind of lays the foundation that then helps us understand in very practical ways how to live in the world as citizens of the kingdom of God. And it's not easy to do, but it's possible to do, and it's part of what Christ calls us to do in following him. So I hope that this series will really be foundational in helping us understand what it means to be part of his kingdom, how to come into it, how to proclaim it, and how to live in it in both the now and the not yet. I want to recommend to you a book called The Gospel of the Kingdom by George Ladd. Some books have a longer shelf life than others, and this is a book with a long shelf life. It's brief. The chapters are 10 to 15 pages long, and I think you'll find, if, if you want to know more about this subject, chapter 1, what is the kingdom, and then chapters 2 and 3 on the kingdom tomorrow and today, you'll find we'll fill out what we're teaching here. I have four copies. These are free. Anybody who wants them, I'm going to leave them up here. They're free after the service. And um, if you can't afford one of these books, let me know. I'll buy you one. If you want to buy one on your own, the link is in the um, lyrics uh, uh, part of, of, of what you were just looking at. It'll also be on the email that goes out later. So please, I want to encourage you to that book. Now, as we get ready to hear God's Word, I want to mention this bottle of itch gel that I used earlier this week because I had this super itchy mosquito bite, and I pulled it out of the um, cabinet, and I thought, I wonder how old this is. 
And I looked at it, and it says expires June 2009. <laughs> there are lots of kids here who, <laughs> who aren't as old as this bottle of itch gel. Now, why do I say that? Because the words that you're about to hear have no expiration date. They're God's living words yesterday, today, and forever. The Word of God never changes, never ends, and never fails. So prepare your hearts to hear Luke chapter 8, verses 4 to 15. Karen Lanthier, thanks for reading. Hang on. Try again, you went out. Hang on, Karen, just hang on. All right. Luke 8, verses 4 through 15. And when a great crowd was gathering, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while and in time of testing fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Thank you, Karen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. on earth, in Fairfax County, in our lives, as it is in heaven. Amen. We believe that understanding the kingdom of God is vital for the Christian life. Understanding that Jesus is king and is our king, and that his kingdom is both here and coming. It's today and tomorrow. Understanding these things affects every aspect of our lives, from why you pay your taxes, to how you vote, to why you tell the truth, or get married, or fight for justice, or anything else. And his kingdom is surprising, because it is here truly, but not yet fully. The kingdom of God is right here in the middle of the kingdom of this world, and these two kingdoms are in conflict with one another. That's why, on the one hand, you can look around the world and it can seem as though the world is largely unaffected by Jesus, and at the same time, you can look around and see that Jesus is radically, wonderfully, powerfully transforming countless lives with his awesome saving power, and both things are going on at the same time. And Jesus loves talking about his kingdom. It's his favorite topic to bring up, as Justin mentioned last week. We see even at the beginning of this chapter in verse 1, it says, Jesus was proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God 
to the villages and cities of that region. When Jesus is proclaiming the good news, he's saying the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean when he proclaims the kingdom of God is at hand? Where's your hand? When Jesus says the kingdom of God is at hand, as he does in the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, for example, in many other places, what he's saying is it's as close as my hand. It's right here. He's proclaiming the presence of his kingdom because the king is there in person. Now, what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom of God? We live in a democracy. We don't live in a kingdom. There aren't a lot of kingdoms around these days. Well, last week, Justin Pearson, as he was preaching, gave us a definition. He said, the kingdom of God is the redemptive reign of King Jesus. It's a redemptive reign. King Jesus is on the throne. He said it was begun or it was announced at Jesus' birth. It's completed or fulfilled at his return, and it's enjoyed by his people. We're experiencing it right now. It's a redemptive reign. A king is someone who reigns. They have authority to rule, and Jesus is ruling in a redemptive way. The kingdom over which Jesus rules is a kingdom of restoration. It's a kingdom of rescuing slaves to sin and bringing them into sonship as, as children of the family of God. This kingdom is here now, and it will be fulfilled. It will be completed when Jesus returns. So today we're focusing on the now part, the today part. And next week we'll focus on the tomorrow, the not yet part. This story that if, if you've been in the Bible very much, if you've been around church for a while, this may be a familiar story. This story of Jesus and the sower and the, the soils helps us see the now part, the today part of Jesus' kingdom. As we listen to Jesus preach this story, I want I want to encourage you to get a question in mind and hang on to it. And the question is this. What is this secret of the kingdom of God that he's telling us here? Jesus uses parables to explain his kingdom. And he says there's something that he's making known. There's a mystery, a secret that he's making known. What is it? How, how does it work? Well, excuse me. Jesus loves telling stories. And he loves telling stories that he calls parables, as this one is. A parable is a short story using something you know to explain something that's new. It's an illustration or an allegory. And so he tells this story about a farmer that's out sowing seeds. Now, I'm not a farmer, but I have grass, and my grass dies every year. And so I have this fall ritual where I go out, and I get this grass seed, and I just start throwing it all over the place, usually not on the driveway. But when I throw it over in the grass... Some of it lands on the cement, and when I throw it over places like that, some of it lands on the gravel, and hopefully the hurricane rain doesn't come the next day and wash it all away. That's happened before. But the idea is you're walking out and you're spreading seed, and this is how ancient farmers put their seeds out in Palestine in the first century. There were fields with paths on which they walked, and Parts of the field were kind of rocky or gravelly, and parts of the field had all these other seeds in there where there were these weeds, and parts of the field were just great for growing stuff. And so Jesus tells this story about a sower going out, throwing the seed, and, and, and then the, the seed sits there until something happens. And in the first one, he says, it lands on the path. It lands on the driveway, on the sidewalk, and the birds come and eat it. The squirrels get it. Nothing happens. The second one lands in this rocks, this kind of gravelly, rocky area, and so the seed starts to sprout up, but then sun comes out, it's hot in July, and plant dries up, doesn't have enough roots. The third one, pretty good soil, but lots of competition. You get all these weeds, these thorns growing up around it, the blackberry bushes and the dandelions and everything else grows up around it, chokes the life out of it, there isn't enough moisture for everybody, and so this good seed doesn't make it. And the last one bears, he says, a hundredfold fruit. Now, when you hear parables, one of the questions to keep in mind is, is there a surprise in there somewhere? Because oftentimes there's a surprise, and often it's at the end. And the surprise here is that a grain of, of wheat, a, a grass seed, could have a hundred seeds come out of it. That's not normally how things work. At least that's my understanding of farming, limited as it is. Now, what does it all mean? Aren't you glad that the disciples heard this and said, Hey, Jesus, that was a cool story. Would you now tell us what it's all about? 
explain it to us? He, when the disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, and I'm glad that they asked him because now he begins to explain and gives us some interpretation of it. And in verses 9 and 10, he says, To you has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. What's going on here? Well, Jesus is saying, first, this has something to do with the kingdom, right? So we're going to try to figure out what's the secret. But he's also saying there are going to be differing responses. And some people are going to hear this word and they're going to come deeper into the kingdom and, and it's going to do good things for them. And for others, it's actually going to reinforce their hardness of heart to the things of God. There's actually going to be a, when the word of God comes, it can actually create separation because it, people can respond humbly and get more of the kingdom or harden their hearts and move away from it. Jesus is teaching that a crowd can all hear the same message. Hey, here we are. We're a crowd. We're all hearing the same message this morning. A crowd can all hear the good news of his kingdom, but not all have the same response. Now, at this point, let's pause. This would be a good time to ask ourselves, how am I responding to this word of the kingdom? He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know what that is? That's an invitation to be a particular kind of hearer. What kind of hearer are you this morning? That's the question Jesus has for you. As you hear the word of the kingdom, what kind of response will it get from you? We might ask ourselves, which of these four soils, each one representing a kind of heart condition, which represents me here this morning? So he goes through these four soils. Let's look at the four soils. The first one, as I mentioned, is this path. In verse 12, he says, The devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so they may not believe and be saved. What's Jesus saying here? He's saying that he has an enemy, the devil, his adversary, Satan, and the devil is working constantly to keep people from giving much thought to the gospel of the kingdom. In a moment like this, where there's a big crowd gathered, the devil loves to distract people. Hey, what's for lunch? What's on your phone? What's happening? What are they wearing over there? Is so-and-so here right now? He loves to just draw people's minds away so that they're not able to then respond to the word and get it deep into their heart. The second soil is this, this seed that falls among the rocks. It's kind of a rocky or gravelly soil. They hear the word, and what happens? Did you catch it? What happens? They receive it with joy. There's a positive response, but they, they have a problem. They don't have deep roots. Because they don't have enough root, they believe for a while, and in a time of testing, they fall away. That's verse 13. Have you ever noticed that? Why do some people get excited about Jesus and then later walk away? Why do some people joyfully profess Jesus at a baptism and then later walk away from him? Jesus tells us one reason here is that the message didn't go very deep in the heart. Shallow. And so what happens is there's this initial joy, but when testing comes, they don't persevere. Now, maybe the testing is overt persecution. And this is a good call for us to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, especially in a place like Nigeria right now, where there is overt and massive persecution. Pray for deep roots and perseverance. Maybe it's that kind of testing, or maybe it's just the kind of testing like, hey, if you're going to follow Jesus, it's his kingdom, not yours. So he's on the throne now, and you've got to get off and turn over control of your life to him. And sometimes people don't like to do that. And so there isn't a persevering kind of faith. This one gives up quickly because the roots of the word in the heart are too shallow. The third one is life among the thorns, right? The seed falls, it starts growing, it's in pretty good ground, but the ground is so good that there's lots of competition. And so though these people here, and as they go on their way, the life of the, of, of the plant gets choked out by other plants, thorns, bushes. This is a warning. Can you hear the warning in this? What are these life-choking, kingdom of God, killing weeds? Hear the word of Jesus. They are the cares 
and riches and pleasures of life. Can you hear those things? The cares and riches and pleasures of life. Jesus is saying something so important for us to hear. He's saying that prosperity and pleasure can be as deadly as persecution and trial to faith in the heart of a Christian, the heart of a person, heart of a person who's professed Christ. This means you and I live in a very dangerous place. Do you know that? Do you know that to live in Northern Virginia, do you know that to live in this metro area is to live in a very dangerous place? It's spiritually dangerous to live here because we live in a wealthy and prosperous area filled with cares and riches and pleasures. And there's competition between those things and the life of the kingdom. Soils one, two, and three all have one thing in common. What is it? Did you notice what they all have in common? Did you catch it? No seed makes it to maturity in those three soils. No seed makes it to a, become a mature plant and do what it's supposed to do, produce fruit. The fourth soil is different. So there's actually only two kinds of soil, one that produces fruit and one that doesn't. Who are the people who become mature, who produce fruit? Here's what Jesus says. Look at verse 15. Get your eyes on this verse. They are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. They are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Patience. Can you see what happens here? This is awesome. Here's the kingdom. It's present. It's right here. The good news of the kingdom is preached. Someone receives it, holds it tightly, hangs on to it, perseveres with it. It makes it deeply into the heart. Life begins to change. And this person bears fruit not just in an hour or for a day, but with patience over months and years and decades. These people hear the word, hold it for dear life. Everything depends on this. And they bear fruit. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have ears to hear what Jesus is teaching? He's asking us, what kind of soil are you? Slow down. I want to just hear me right now. Maybe put your phone down, get your mind off whatever is distracting you. Ask yourself honestly, be still. What is the condition of your heart? Is it hard? Is it shallow? Is it full of weeds? Is it good and open to the Word of God? Maybe you're here or you're watching online this morning and you're not a follower of Jesus. And if that's you, thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. You are welcome in this place. Jesus is, is calling, is reaching out through these words. Have you received his word of the kingdom? He's saying it's his kingdom, not yours. He's come to deliver us from the kingdom of self that always ends in destruction. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says, God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This Jesus is the king who comes not only to rule, but to die on a cross to take our punishment, to provide redemption, to provide rescue, to provide deliverance, to provide forgiveness, to provide an escape from the kingdom of darkness to come into his wonderful kingdom. Turn to him now. Call on him now. The way is open to the kingdom of God through Jesus. And believers, brothers and sisters, let us not move too quickly past soils one, two, and three. Maybe just ask yourself, where do you see these soils describing your heart? Maybe not totally, but in some ways. Is there hardness? 
is their dryness. It's the life of the kingdom being choked out by other things. I, I don't know about you, but something happens to me when I go to sleep. I think most of the time when I go to sleep, my, my heart's pretty good soil, and somehow when I wake up, soil's one, two, and three. It's just like they took over while I was sleeping. I, like, I don't know anything about the kingdom. I just a bunch of seeds sitting there. I don't choked out by all these other thoughts and desires and what ha God, Jesus, I, I'm so disoriented. I, I continually need this kind of what's seeping into my heart, what's choking out the word. Oh, how I need this word every day to reorient. Brothers and sisters, what are we putting into our hearts that leaves us dry and lifeless? instead of full of the fruit of the Spirit? What are you looking at on your screens that drains the love of Christ right out of your, the soil of your heart? Shopping and TikTok and did you remember to change the oil in the car? And what if I don't pass this test next week? And the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. And before you know it, the kingdom of God is just being choked out. I can't tell you how important this is. I can't overemphasize this enough. Not possible. Listen, the only difference between soils one, two, and three and the soil that bears fruit, soil four, can you see there's only one difference? The only difference is the place of the word in the heart of the person. That's the only difference difference. The fourth soil, they hear the word. Well, lots of people hear the word, but they don't just hear it. They hold it. They hang on to it like everything depends on it because it does. And then holding on to it, they pray it. They repent through it. They trust in it. They find hope there. They call out to God. They obey it. And out of that, they bear fruit. They become these Psalm 1 kinds of trees with roots that are deep in the Word. Lives that bear fruit no matter what's happening. Today's my birthday. I'm 62. I tell you, I, thank you. I, I tell you this, it's also Kenneth's birthday. You'll have to find out how old he is. But he was born two years after I was, so you can do the math. He said I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. Here's why I'm telling you this. Getting the word deep in your heart and keeping it there is a matter of life and death. And it's a learned thing. I remember as a young Christian, as a 17, 18 year old, I was in a Bible study and this older lady, I think she was 20, she said, if I didn't hear the word, if I don't read the Bible every day, I think I'll die. And I can remember thinking, I have no idea what you are talking about. And I want to stand here this morning as a 62-year-old and saying, if I don't get the word in my heart every day, I think I will die. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go find out. Pray about this. Call out to God over this. Brothers and sisters, Get the Word in your heart. Read it. Meditate on it. Pray over it. Memorize it. Ask for help with it. Speak it to one another. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Teach this Word to one another. Let us be a Word community. We must have this Word in our hearts day by day, holding it fast if we're going to be people who can bear fruit. And we want to be that kind of people. That's why we're here, I know. So that's my encouragement. Help me with that. I need your help. So what is the secret of the kingdom? What is this secret? What's the secret that Jesus is teaching us here? Well, listen, see the scene. There's all these people here in the Word. Some respond with saving faith and others don't. Why? Is it election or predestination? Is it how much education they have? Is it something else? Jesus doesn't say because that's not what he's after here. What he's after is to tell us a very simple secret, and that is this, 
The secret of the kingdom is that Jesus' message meets with varied responses. Right? You see that in the Gospels. His message meets with a variety of responses. It's present truly with power to save, but it can also be rejected. It can be opposed. It can be ignored. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. It's so powerful, you can be born again through it. Nobody's got enough money to be born again. Nobody's got the right technology to make you be born again. But you can be born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God, which is the good news that is being preached to you right here today in this text. The kingdom is today. It's here and it's now. It advances through the proclamation of the gospel, through announcing the good news about Jesus. So the secret is the message receives a varied response, a variety of responses. It's present with power to save. It can also be rejected. What do we do with that? One last question for you this morning, and that is this. Who's the sower? I want to just ask you a Sunday school question. Who's the sower in the story? You all know the Sunday school answer, right? It's Jesus. Of course he is. He's the one who's out preaching the word. Here's the, here's the follow-up question. If Jesus isn't on earth now, who's the sower now? Who's sowing the word now? Jesus, before he leaves, he says, all authority has been given to me. Why? Because he's the king. Go, make disciples, teach them everything I've commanded you. In other words, disciples, you are the sowers. You sow the word now. The word advances. The kingdom is here now. How does it advance? Not by military power. It doesn't advance by steamrollers and overwhelming people. It advances by a word that's like a seed that you just keep throwing out, sowing, sowing. So I love in Acts 8, verse 4, there's some persecution, and it says, those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Who was doing that? Who was preaching the word? Just people like us. They got scattered by persecution, didn't plan on it, didn't like it probably, but they went out preaching the word. We can't build the kingdom of God, but we can proclaim it. God uses ordinary disciples like us to sow the word of the gospel. So, question, do you see yourself as a sower? Are you a farmer for the word of God? Are you the kind of person who's ready and looking for opportunities to spread the good news of Jesus to the people around you. Maybe we can just ask ourselves a few questions, because for most of us this doesn't come easily, and for me it definitely doesn't. Just ask, ask yourself, why don't I share? What, what holds me back? Do I feel like I'm a hypocrite? Am I afraid how somebody's going to respond? Am I just not sure what to say? Maybe I just don't even know anybody to share with. I've ended up in some sort of Christian bubble where I don't actually in, engage people who don't know. Them. I just, just want to encourage you, wherever you are in this, God's at work. Spirit's in you. Pray about this. Bring these things to him. Ask him to help you grow as a sower of the word. Look for opportunities to just develop friendships with people who don't know Jesus. Take an interest in them. You don't have to get weird and only talk about Jesus all the time. Just be nice. Love people. Ask them about their lives. Ask them what their interests are. When they maybe ask you about your life and your interests, well, then be ready to just speak simply and genuinely about your faith. You get a chance like that. Parents, you got kids at home. Parents, be faithful farmers. You'll be amazed how fast these years go by. I want to just encourage you to make sure the word is being sown and not just when it's time for correction, but for building up and teaching and training. To you has been given the secrets of the kingdom of God. What's the secret we're learning here? Well, the kingdom of God, it meets with varied, the message of the kingdom meets with varied responses. It's present with power to save. It can also be rejected. That's part of the now and the not yet. So our job is get the seed out there and leave the results to God. Now, how does this help us? Two implications, just two things to hang on to as, 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 as we leave here, or as we return to singing in a moment and then, and then go forward. How does knowing this secret help us? First, remember that your soil, can I say this nicely? Your dirt. 
right? Every one of us, we're dirt. Jesus, first he tells us we're houses, back in chapter 6, he, and he tells us we're trees. Now he tells us we're ground, we're dirt. Okay, since we're soil, let us, oh, brothers and sisters, let us watch our hearts and fill it with the Word of God. Is God's Word finding a place deep in your heart? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let us be a people who hear it and hold it and bear fruit with patience. Second, we're not only soil, we're sowers. And since we're sowers, well, let us speak the word of God. Let us speak the word of God to one another. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We need that from one another. We need the word from one another. And let us remember that Jesus' kingdom expands not by brute force. It expands through the word and by the power of the spirit. So as we are scattered through the city this week in whatever virtual or in-person ways that happens. Let us go about ready to sow the word, to preach the word, to scatter the word, to speak the word of Christ that gives ears, that gives life for all who have ears to hear. And with that, I'd like to invite the band to come up so that we can sing to this great king who's come with the redemptive reign to make it possible for us to be delivered from the kingdom of darkness and brought into his glorious and saving kingdom. <clears throat> when Kenneth uh, dismisses in a few minutes, I want to remind you that these books are here. They're free. And if anybody can't afford one, let me know, and I would love to buy one for you. Let's stand together and let's sing to our great king.
third soil in the parable talks about that the, the weights of the things of this world, the riches, the, the anxieties can be a, a stumbling block for us. And so as we sing this verse, this, this bridge just says, hey, these things are going to come, these things are going to happen, whether they're good or whether they're bad, Jesus is still better. And we sing that as a church, we're singing it in faith, asking the Lord to do that work in our hearts. In all my sorrows, Jesus is better. Make my heart believe. In every victory, Jesus is better. Make my heart believe. In any
I'll return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the sea, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. thing it is. We serve a king who is the king of kings, the Lord of lords to whom all glory and power and might belong. We're citizens of his kingdom, and yet his kingdom grows in us through his word. It's, it's a humbling thing. It's not through going to the gym, getting stronger. It's not through tanks and missiles that the kingdom of God grows. It grows through the humble reception of the word of God. brothers and sisters, let's make sure we're good stewards of the word. Jesus said, now that you've heard these things, blessed will you be if you do them. We have an enormous privilege to cherish the word of God. And if you're here this morning and maybe you don't know, maybe you're reading the word and you're feeding on it, I just want to encourage you, continue to do that and ask God to work in your life and just be faithful through humble patience let the Word of God bear fruit in your life. But if you're having trouble reading the Word or want help with that, if you know someone in your life who loves the Word, just go to them and say, tell me, how do you read the Word? How does it mean so much to you? Or come to one of us, one of the elders of the church or community group leaders. But there, anyone who loves the Word, just come. We want to help you. We want to be a community that loves the Word together. And if you're having trouble, let us help you love to grab coffee with you if you need help in reading the word you know I, I love the connection that Mark made there about being sowers and loving the word because evangelism and sharing the word is not something we do it's not a task it overflows out of our life for our love for God if we love the word and we love Jesus we will love telling people about our love for him 
Psalm 119. I was, I was talking to an acquaintance who does not have a personal relationship with the Lord this week. And, and he said to me, I asked him, I said, do you, would you read the word? What does it mean to you? He said, well, I know the word. I've read it all, but it's just good stories. I, he said, then he turned to me and said, what does it mean to you? And I just thought, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even put it into words. I really, I just wanted to let him know how much love was in my heart. I said, have you ever read Psalm 119? The word is like sweeter than honey to my taste. And he understood. I said, I, I said I, he said, do you read it every day? I said, yes, but not because I have to, but because I get to and I love it. That's what God wants for us, to worship him as we grow in our knowledge of him and our experience of him. Through his, we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, brothers and sisters. We can read his word with understanding and grow in the grace of God. So let's do that together. As you leave today, I just want to remind you, our guest lunch, if you're a guest here, starts 11.45, just a few, 20 minutes from now. 25 minutes from now, we're going to be meeting in that door right there. Wear a mask, please, as you enter the building. And we look forward to meeting you. Membership Explored begins on September 26th and 29th. And now as you go, may the word of God dwell in you richly. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen.